Knock, knock. Who's there? Threat wire. Security teams across the globe have been up in arms over the newly discovered YubiKey cloning attack. The attack was published by the team at Ninja Lab, who were also responsible for the discovery of being able to clone the Google Titan 2FA keys in 2021. The attack is viable on all YubiKey 5 series with firmware below 5.7, so any YubiKey released before May 2024. If you know about the YubiKey ecosystem, this does mean that the side channel attack vulnerability has existed for 14 years. YubiKeys and its associated technology, FIDO hardware, are considered to be some of the most secure authentication factors around. The viability of being able to clone a FIDO hardware-based system is revolutionary. But how practical is this attack? Let's look at the optics of the viability of the discovered attack as we walk through how it works. The attack cannot happen remotely and independently. Given that YubiKeys are used as a second form of authentication, attackers will need that first form of authentication. Second, the attack cannot happen without physical access to the YubiKey. And it cannot occur quickly. The attack requires literally breaking down the YubiKey to capture side channel metrics. Executing the attack requires a lab of its own. The team at Ninja Lab used an electromagnetic probe, a micro manipulator, a digital microscope, two types of oscilloscopes, and more to carry out their side channel measurements. In the write-up, they mentioned that while their setup costed upwards of 45,000 euros, they believed that a setup costing around 10,000 euros would also be viable. Beyond the hardware requirements, the researchers at Ninja Lab reverse engineer the cryptographic library used by the YubiKey hardware from the team at Infineon. In normal context, to even get access to this API, you have to go under extreme security checks, have to sign an NDA, and more. So yes, while the discussion mostly covers the YubiKey vulnerability, technically all products use the Infineon security microcontrollers with a cryptographic library are vulnerable. Once an attacker gets access to a key, they must execute a robust number of readings on the YubiKey. The side channel taken advantage of is the electromagnetic radiation from the token while undergoing the authentication protocol. The measurements can then be used to generate the ECDSA token or elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. This token is used as a cryptographic primitive in the FIDO protocol. Using all of this collected information, a copied YubiKey can be generated. The attacks violate a fundamental guarantee of FIDO compliant keys, which is that the secret cryptographic material they store can't be read or copied by any other device. This assurance is crucial because FIDO keys are used in various security critical environments, such as those in the military and corporate networks. Yubico, makers of the YubiKey, have anointed this vulnerability with a CVSS score of 4.9. While it is a major vulnerability in the FIDO ecosystem, the practicality, ease of executability, and complexity of the issue contributed to the low score. There will not be any replacements for existing YubiKeys. Twitter was banned from the entire country of Brazil by a judge on August 31st, 2024. The order went to the Brazilian Supreme Court a few days later and was upheld unanimously. What happened? In April, X ew, was ordered by courts in Brazil to ban several accounts spreading what was deemed as misinformation. The company's leadership decided to not comply with the decision to uphold free speech. X quickly pulled a 180 and agreed to comply, but never actually did. This led to Brazilian courts threatening to arrest a local employee due to the company's failure to comply. As a result, Twitter leadership announced it would instead close its offices in Brazil. There were also fines given out, as well as accounts frozen for Elon Musk's menagerie of companies. The battle peaked with the final decision to force the company to cease operations in the country. Even more so, any person in Brazil who would try to access the site via alternative methods, specifically a VPN, would be fined close to $9,000 per day. Twitter had over 20 million users in Brazil, being its fifth largest international market. Stan Twitter was unanimously upheld by Brazilian fan culture. I know we are all familiar with seeing comments under major celebrity tweets saying, come to Brazil. In an act of defiance, Twitter sister company and internet provider Starlink originally did not plan to comply with the ban until its bank accounts were unfrozen. It eventually did capitulate and has complied with the court order. 
As of writing, the service is still banned in the country. A decision was published by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals on Wednesday, September 4th regarding the work that is done by the Internet Archive. This decision will most likely jeopardize the future of one of its most important projects. For those unfamiliar, Internet Archive is dedicated to the preservation and collection of cultural artifacts in a digital media form, a paper library, but online. For years, they've been running a program called Open Library, which digitizes printed books by literally scanning them and uploading them to the internet. In 2020, as a response to COVID, the Internet Archive created the National Emergency Library. They describe it as a temporary collection of books that supported emergency remote teaching, research activities, independent scholarship, and intellectual stimulation while universities, schools, training centers, and libraries were closed. The library opened on March 24th and closed on June 16th. It ran for less than five months. That same year, multiple book publishers came together to sue Internet Archive for copyright infringements they believed took place by creating and running the National Emergency Library. In March 2023, a federal judge ruled that the free digital library and works did in fact infringe on publishers' copyrights, rejecting the fair use defense used. The most recent ruling that happened on September 4th was in response to the appeal to the original ruling. It maintained the ruling that the work that the Internet Archive did was not transformative, not fair use, and therefore not allowed. The next appeal the Internet Archive can take will be bringing the case to the Supreme Court. Thank you so much for watching Threatwire for the week of September 9th, 2024. I am curious, audience, where do you get your cybersecurity news besides from here? I'm always looking to add new sources to where I'm reading from, so let me know in the comments below. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Ally. And thank you so much for watching. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.